M0 FXB, welcome back to the channel. So I had a question today. When are they gonna bring back the shack in the box radio? So let's list a few top 10 shack in the box radios. I think I'll start from number five and count down. Hopefully I'll get it right. So number five, the Yesu 891 which bordered between being a mobile radio and a base station radio. It had a carry handle, it had a battery as well, which was quite unusual for a radio of that size. And yes, it did VHF, UHF, HF bands and six meters. And I believe there was a tuner that you could bolt to the site. So that was an additional module. So there's number five. Number four, let's do the yeah. Yesu 857, which is one of my favorites. Um, again, same bands, but a, a smaller, a, a much smaller device. I used to use it as a base station and you could put it next to your PC screen, run something like Ham Radio Deluxe, cool, a bit bumpy here. You did need an external tuner, but you could buy like a 100 watt tuner. And these are 100 watt radios, by the way. And the screen was a bit small, but it was like a larger version of the 817, 818. And so it was quite, you know, a breath of fresh air to get basically the 817, but with more power. I like that radio a lot. And even now I did sell mine, but even now when I use it, or used it, I enjoyed it, yeah? And the screen changed color as well. And it had that, they was, I think one of the first radios to really make a big thing of DSP, dig digital signal processing. Um, so yeah, next one, uh, let's go with the ICOM 7000. Uh, so yeah, that's number three, even though, yeah, forget the numbers I'm using. Now that was a fantastic device if you ask me in its in the way in its usability and functionality it had a color screen covered all those bands again you needed an additional tuner but it was very compact the color screen actually is very reminiscent of what they use now on the icom 70 7300 and 705 type radios no it did not have a waterfall you know um but in its day that was uh, it wasn't a cheap radio of mine it was 900 eight nine hundred pounds and that was like 15 years ago but fantastic, you still buy them now for about six, seven hundred pounds. Obviously, they're old. I did have a mint one that was virtually brand new. I sold it because it was just sat there. And I, just, I always regret selling radios, but I did sell it. And I actually wish I never. So, um, another one. Um, I'd say, what do I think now? The, the uh, Kenwood TS2000. Now, that was a big shack in the box radio, but it came if you paid extra with 23 cents, it had a built-in tuner, yeah? Um, and it's a beautiful radio, dual receive as well, dual simultaneous receive, so you could listen to your HF bands and your favorite local VHF, UHF repeaters at the same time. None of these radios are digital. That's probably, I would say, probably the best one I ever had. But really, the number one position will always go, I think, to the ICOM 706 Mark IIG. And the Mark IIG is very important because that gave you 70 centimeters. And I've used this radio. And for me, it was the one that operated the best on HF. Although it worked very good on two meters and 70, had a bigger screen than the sort of Yesu type radios. Again, you needed a tuner. So that's probably the number one. So. Then Yesu and Icon, they go into this, it almost feels like 20 year period, where they almost stop making shack in the boxes. I mean, the Icon 7100 is another one that I haven't included, but that was a very good shack in the box. Again, no tuner, but it had the separate head unit. Very compact and touch screen. So yeah, excellent. And then they come out with the Icon 705. Now, if they'd come out with the ICOM 705 and the ICOM 705 Plus that did 100 watts, 
and you pay more for it and it's a larger device going back rather than the front that would have been a bestseller easily like you've got the new Yaesu FT1X if that was a 100 watt device people would be queuing up for it and they'll pay more so why don't they just do it I mean I know I like QRP the 1X is not a replacement for the 817 it's a different kind of form factor altogether the 817 you put it in a bag you hung it over your shoulder you had the rubber duck sticking out the top or the bottom yeah and you were like one of the 817 818 club it was completely unique and they should definitely bring that one back I do think they should, where they can improve the hardware they should yeah but the form factor should be very similar but they may as well move some of the buttons and give us a bigger screen it doesn't have to be touched just give us something we can see from our waist so um you know please we're always told that Yesu and I hear these live interviews we've got Ray from Icon we've got John Crook from Yesu and we're always told yeah we're trying to give you what you want we're looking at feedback we're getting feedback we're trying to give you what you want but we never seem to get what we want because shack in the box is something we've all been asking for for ages another one two meters sideband make a radio that does it please it's basic two meter sideband would be a lot more active and wouldn't that be fun yeah if the big manufacturers made them even the budget manufacturers don't make them saying that no actually they don't if you get a Zygu G90 all those type budget no they just don't bother but the thing is most hams would enjoy using SSB I remember we could do that on on some of those older shacks couldn't we I'm pretty sure we could and so people would and I remember going on nets where they people were chatting on SSB so you know if please don't say you're giving us what you want but they're not to give us what we want we didn't want an ft5 we didn't want that just in, we just wanted the ft3d improved for example um did we want the new ftm 150 165 168 did we want it i don't think we did actually and they brought out that other similar Yesu. Is it? Oh, I've got the model number now. Um, we didn't want it. Actually, the Yesu FTM 200. That was a good device. They've discontinued it. The FTM 400. <coughs> everyone loved it. They discontinued it. It doesn't make any sense. Mazzy. If you have made something that's good, then that we like upgrades. But keep the good bits. <laughs> Don't just reinvent it every time, it's just pointless. You know, the FT, a lot of people are not gonna buy the FT1X because it's QRP, a lot of people. Just make one that can be QRP and 100 watts, everyone's gonna buy it. Bye for now, say bye to Mazzy. Give us hams, what we want, listen to us, please. 7-3.